G'day. The other day a friend of mine, Eric, came round and we were talking, as you do, and one of the questions sort of that came up was, how would you bootstrap a mill? As in, you've got a bare mill, you haven't got T-nuts, you haven't got strap clamps, you haven't got any of that sort of stuff. How do you actually get that to a usable state? And I thought about this for a while, and so I'm now putting together, and this will be the first of, of several videos on how do you do that? The rules for this one are, are, are pretty simple. Uh, imagine yourself in the situation where um, Great Uncle George is, clean, is, is downsizing uh, and he's given you his meal uh, and your idiot cousin who doesn't understand things threw away that box of headless bolts because, well, who would need those? The way I'm going to do this is start with some steel and, and things you could do with a drill press and a, and a, a hacksaw uh, and then work your way up from that. Once I've, once I've done those things, like I'll be making some T-nuts, once I've done the T-nuts I'm going to be using my own T-nuts uh, just because I'm doing this as a demo more than anything else. So I'm not, I'm not after making uh, lots of, of tooling. Uh, it's just, you know, this is how you do it. Next piece, assume you've got that and go on from there. Bit of a recap for those new to milling machines. The basis of holding things down on a milling machine and for that matter uh, on the, the surface of a rotary table, on face plates and all that sort of stuff is this thing. Uh, and it's referred to as a T-slot for obvious reasons. Inside the T-slot goes a thing called a T-nut, once again, you know, for obvious reasons. So these two flanges uh, sit underneath and then the rest of this is, is pretty much support for the thread. This one's a, a, a custom made one for this mill because these are a, a slightly larger T-slot than you'd normally find in a home workshop. but they come in in various sizes and so this is the typical one you get for a, um, a half inch slot. It has a 3 8 uh, 16 TPI, so UNC thread in it, goes in there and that's, that's the basis of what we're, we're going to be making. Okay. Now in order to hold some stock onto the mill here you need something like this. Rather than pursue one of these circular arguments what I've done is I've got a bit of flat, uh, this is probably about six millimeter thick, and I've tapped it and put a thread in it. Okay, and once again, this is, this is just for this mill. That'll sit in there like so. Now, it's not perfect, it hasn't got much as much uh, length for the thread to go in, but to start with, that's all you need. Okay, and you can do that with, with just a drill and a tap and a hacksaw. Before we start doing that, is making up one of these. Right? This is a bit of angle and the holes in here correspond with my, my T-slots. I've also come in with an angle grinder and ground that uh, corner out a little bit opposite the holes. Now this is just once again a temporary thing. The idea is though that I can put that with a, with a nut on top on the T-slot and a, and a, and a T-nut underneath it and secure that. Okay? And that way I've got a fence that I can use for locating things. One of the things that you'll do with when making stuff on the mill is you want to get it square to the table and so if you're doing repetitious stuff that sort of thing comes in handy you know and I've got the holes arranged so I can either put it that way or that way and that way I've got a, I've got a, a stop, a, a, a position or something that I can, I can get a bit of bar stock and position it against that. The other thing you're going to need, apart from some, some lengths of stud, and you can just buy all thread in a, in a hardware shop, or um, threaded rod, whatever you want to call it, and some nuts to suit, not a problem, is a strap. These are from my, my strap clamp set, but all they are basically is a, is a piece of, of uh, thickish material, maybe a half inch thick, 12 millimeter. Uh, what's that, probably about 25 wide with a hole in them. Now that's got a slot so you can adjust it a little bit. You don't need to do that. Okay. What will happen when these things are in the T-slot the is that you'll clamp your material down like that and underneath here uh, once again on a, on a tie down set you've got a, a serrated uh, wedge arrangement but that's just for convenience of, of uh, adjustment and so you could use anything you like underneath there as long as it's um, 
at least equal to the height of the material you're holding. Uh, and the reason for that is that if, you're, if you have it up like that, all you're doing is holding onto the corner. And what's more, the forces that are there are such that it's going to want to shoot the material out. If you're holding down like that, you're pushing down on the, on the part. It doesn't want to shoot away from you. What you're normally trying to do is get that level or maybe slightly with the back end slightly up, but that's, that's clamping down. Well, I remember this is another thing worth showing you too. This is a collection of uh, bits of studding, various lengths, all that sort of thing. The, the commercially available uh, tie down sets usually start with a stud about that long and I find that sometimes you need shorter so once again you can make this with just uh, getting a bit of a threaded rod and cutting it to size. Uh, I've got T-nuts various sizes I've got nuts so if you want some way to store all this sort of stuff something like that works quite nicely. If you um, you know if you want to splash out the money and buy yourself a, 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 a strap set you can not a problem but uh, I've got one of those but I've also got this for the shorter stuff and the extra nuts and things um, these ones are the size for my rotary table and what else is it faceplate I think it is they all take this um, 3 8 16 TPI thread it's just that they're a slightly narrower T-slot I have my fence in position. I've, I've run the, uh, the table along and trammed it in with the uh, test indicator here. One thing about a test indicator too is that they're designed to be, have the, the indicator slightly down like that, you know, 15, 30 degrees. Uh, because that's, that's spherical and then there's a, there's a sign contribution in there. That's, that's how they're meant to be used. There are some with a, a what's called a cardioid tip on them, heart-shaped tip, which gives you a wider range, but when you're, when you're indicating that's, that's what you should be doing. If you've got it like that, uh, you're probably not indicating properly. It doesn't matter if you're doing this sort of thing because you're just trying to get it all the same level. There's my fence. It's dialed in so that's all good. I've used my make do T-nuts to hold that down with a couple of lengths of studs and a couple of nuts. Uh, I'm going to use my proper T-nuts here just because I've only got two of those. Normally I'd suggest if you're going to make T-nuts you probably want to make at least half a dozen of them. You'll, you'll be surprised how many you use for things. There's my sample part. So what I'm going to do is just clamp that to there. I've got three nuts in here. I'm going to start off by clamping those two down and leaving this one free, coming along until I get to, you know, there somewhere, stopping, putting this clamp on, taking that one off, continuing on, stopping, taking this clamp off, putting this one on, always at, at keeping two clamps on the job so I can go and, and, and do a, a full cut along there, okay? That way I'm going to get this always being held down by two clamps and always being you know where I want it. Once I've done that I'm going to flip it over do the other side and that'll get me my basic shape. Once you've got that the rest of it is is basically clean up and you may not need to clean up the sides or the bottom or the top for your mill depends on what you've got and remember you can treat these as an interim thing once you've got this you can then use these to make better ones or you can then improve them later on when you've got some other bits of tooling but this is basically how do you bootstrap once you've got those you can then just cut those off with a with a hacksaw or something like that or a, or a bandsaw if you've got one uh, drill some holes tap them and you've got some t-nuts and that's that's all there is to it
and that's my stick of tea nut stock. Uh, I've had to put this clamp here because I found that this was starting to, to, to pull out. So that's another, um, should we say, eventuality you may have to, to, to think about because these are, these are prying downward force, uh, not sideways. The whole, uh, whole thing about clamping is to increase the, 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 the frictional forces between you know, your material and your, your, um, tab uh, and your table. So uh, that's, that's all you're doing with this. And as you can see, that bit there is, is undersized, so that's no good. Um, as this is only a, a demonstration piece, uh, it means that I'll, ne I'll only get you know, what, one, two, three out of that rather than four. One last thing about uh, homemade tea nuts. I've tapped these and I've tapped them right through and that's all good. But you'll notice that a bit of studding goes right through. Now, cast iron doesn't like to be in, in tension, uh, which is what most tea, nut, uh, with tea slots sorry, are. And so what will happen is if you crank down against that, there's enough leverage there that you could actually damage your table. And so what most manufacturers will do is that they'll distort a couple of these last threads so that the stud goes in but can't go past the bottom. That one is get a centre punch and use a centre punch just to sort of distort a thread or two. As I hope you can see, it doesn't need to be much, but it's enough to stop that stud going going right through, and that's that's all you want really. Uh, and if for some strange reason you decide later on that you don't need that, you run the tap down through it again, and, and it'll clear that out. The thing about parallels is that basically the top and bottom are parallel. The thickness doesn't matter too much. The length doesn't matter too much, provided it's long enough to support what you're doing. So, using this same setup. You know, getting, making sure there's no swarf there. You could put a piece of flat in there, clamp at both ends, run along the top, flip it over, run along the other side, and you've got a piece of material which is parallel. If you clamp two of them against your fence like that, you've got a pair of parallels. Now, you may not need those now, but uh, if you have a vice, they come in handy, and sometimes they come in handy too. Uh, when you know, machining this piece, one option might have been that I, if I wanted to, I could have put that up there, or maybe like that, a machine, but I would have had to have something parallel underneath it to, to help do that. What else could you make which is handy? Well, these are things called one, two, three blocks, so-called because they're one inch by two inches by three inches, and usually these are, these are made out of a hardenable steel and then you grind them. And I think that's mainly for wear. So, you know, if you, if you wanted to, to, to do some, some more bootstrappy type work, you could make a set of these out of mild steel. Uh, as long as you were careful with them, it wouldn't matter too much. And once again, there's nothing saying that once you've made a set and, and you've used them for doing some things, you can't retire them for just using for setups and all that sort of stuff. They don't have to be precise. There you have it. So, some tea nuts uh, made with some mock tea nuts, which I'll still keep around the place because they might be useful. Uh, some fences. I've got these two here. I've cut them down so that they're just holding the edge of something rather than sticking right up. It means I can run a cutter across. I've also left the third one long just so in case I want to, you know, clamp something to that because that could be handy. Uh, if I was going to make a habit of that, I'd probably uh, square that up as I show you in, in uh, what's likely to be the next video. And some parallels just to show that yes, you, you, you know, the simplest of tooling you can use for, for something like this. So that's about all we've got time for this week. Uh, the next video in this series, I'll be looking at making some angle plates and um, some, some, you know, very basic V blocks. Uh, and then probably Sometime after that, I'm, I'm looking at making a small vise without having a vise or anything like that here. Thanks for watching. See you for the next one.